In this quick video, I'm going to show you some tips on importing EFT vendor details, customer details, and EFT employee details. Because it depends on the bank that you're paying the vendors or doing direct debits against customers or paying the employees, because it depends on the bank file format that you're using, what fields are needed and what the fields need to be in terms of length or in terms of characters or digits, we cannot provide a standard import for vendors, customers and employee EFT details. We recommend that you configure EFT for the default bank that you're using and then enter one of these records manually, export it and then use that exported file as a template for importing the details. If you have turned on encryption for the vendor's bank account details, the branch number and the account number, or and or for customers and employees, then you should not be importing the encrypted fields. You only import the unencrypted fields. With vendors and customers, you can export existing details, change the file and re-import, but not with EFT employees. Because EFT employees, you are allowed multiple bank accounts. The standard Sage imports do not allow the updating of detail lines, only the inserting. So if you were to export and then re-import, you would end up with that account number duplicated. And when you're converting to EFT processing from another EFT system, even if the file that you create for the bank does not look quite the same, you should still try it out because all of ORCID's bank formats have been tested and although they might be different to another system, they may still be acceptable by the bank. And we encourage you to look at the Getting Started Guide in our online help before starting setting up your EFT processing. So let's see what this means in practice. In EFT Options, on the Primary File Type tab, this is where you define your primary file type, where you typically send payments using this particular specification. And it's this file type that defines what fields are mandatory and which fields are required or which fields need to be numeric or 10 in length, etc. on both the EFT customer and the EFT vendor. And similarly, for your payroll, it's this primary bank on this tab, which is the primary file type and defines what information is required for EFT employees. So after you filled that in, now if I go to my customer or vendor, you will see that we have fields like IBAN and SWIFT and on the additional fields tab, we've got a number of different fields that we need to fill in for this particular vendor. So you need to know the bank address and other details like who's going to bear the charges, what are the instruction codes and what is the purpose code. So all of this needs to be filled in. So you fill in one example and export that to be your template for all your other EFT vendor records. And then we would recommend exporting this I'm just going to set the criteria to vendor 1200. And then when you open it up, as you can see, I had remit to for 1200 as well. So that's why I've got two records. But here we can see the columns that we need to fill in. So what we recommend here is that you delete any columns that are not needed. The example data will tell you, although the fields called extra one and extra two, the example data will show you the fields that you need. And anything that is blank, delete.
And with these remaining fields, this is the email address, the delivery method, whether it's EFT or you're going to use the AP delivery method. And here is the encrypted branch account number and branch number. So these should not be imported. And the password for the remittance advice. And these ones, whether you include them or doesn't, it doesn't matter. They're not actually, they're calculated fields. They can't really be imported. So once you have your template, you would fill it in for all your other uh, vendors with their details. This is the unencrypted branch number and account number. You'd fill them in and then go file import. So let's just copy these here. and save and then back in our EFT vendor if we import vendor 1200 is the same but vendor 1200 PO box has now got the same details as we did against vendor 1200. So that's the same for vendors and customers. You can create new and update existing records. But with your employees, because you can have multiple bank accounts for your employees, these records cannot be updated. They can only be inserted. So you should export an example row and use that for all your other employees that are going to be configured in the same way. And on the detail, you will be seeing the same variable fields. And then when you import, you can only choose the insert. So it's going to, it's going to insert account rows for all the employees. Thanks, Anne, for this insightful tips on importing into EFT processing. Most of this is uh, summarized and um, documented in the ORCID help under the EFT import topic.